last thing yep. uh, that, that we'll get into, just kind of uh, touching on scores, uh, there was a screenshot on Instagram that, I, I, so I don't know currently what it's at, but at one point, Thor Ragnarok was at 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, so we're going to go into another brief Rotten Tomatoes slash score rant um, and kind of elaborate a little bit more. Uh, Nick actually gave us uh, a video to watch um, that kind of uh, helped support our argument a little bit, which was kind of interesting. So um, the screenshot that I thought was very telling was it shows Thor Ragnarok 93%, uh, the critic consensus, and then it lists a couple other films, Forrest Gump 71%. Tombstone, 73%. Interstellar, 71%. Gladiator, 76%. Braveheart, 78 All of those, I'm like blown away. I don't, I actually haven't seen Interstellar. Um, you haven't seen Interstellar? I haven't, yeah. I, I know, I need to. You can't even like say that that's the initial reaction. This is all in hindsight. Rotten Tomatoes didn't exist in 1994 when Forrest Gump came out or 1993 when Tombstone came out. Or 1995. <laughs> the 90s were a shitty year for Rotten Tomatoes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't get it. They still call it, consider it certified fresh at 78%, but they would consider uh, Braveheart a crappier movie than Thor Ragnarok. So the video that, uh, that Nick had recommended to us is called The Anchoring Effect. Yep, it's done by a YouTube channel called Extra Credits. Thank you. I, I did not give extra credits credit. <laughs> I just remember it was called the anchoring effect. It's been out for a little bit too. This isn't something new. No, Nick and, sent this to us a long, a while back. Yeah, and it doesn't. Uh, it it's doesn't actually have anything to do with um, with movies. Yeah. Um, this guy is actually talking about video games. Or I shouldn't say it doesn't have anything to do with movies. Uh, it correlates very well with movies and how but the examples they're using is is video games. Game, video yeah. Games. So uh, basically, um, in the anchoring effect, the the narrator is is talking about that you are much more likely to enjoy a game if you are told it is good beforehand. And uh, some researchers used plants versus zombies to do a study, um, and there, there have been uh, plenty of similar studies with similar results. So this wasn't just a a kind of one off study that uh, that doesn't doesn't really you know mean anything. Um, and basically, they told the first group of critics. Um, or, or they so they had three different groups. They told the first group that critics gave the Plants vs Zombies a ninety one, the second group a sixty one, and the third group nothing. They then asked them to to play the game and give it a score. The first group who was told that the critics gave it a ninety one, they gave it an eighty five. The second group who was told the critics gave it a sixty one, uh, they gave it a seventy one, and the third group that was told nothing gave it a seventy nine. That's a pretty broad range. Right in the middle. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the real score is always right, in the middle. Yep, right in the middle. That's a pretty broad range from 71 all the way up to 85 uh, a, of, of different scores. Um, and then they, they basically kind of, in the video, they kind of go um, on to discuss the, how the price of, of games can be affected by your perception of it. You know, yeah. if, if you're looking at, at at the price of a game and it's it, it didn't get very good reviews, you may buy it on sale, you may not buy it at all. Whereas uh, on the other side uh, of it, if it's rated very well, you're going to pay more for it. Um, they also talk about why gaming companies pay a lot of money and they, they try to strategically give their games to people who will uh, positively review it because they know that the the more positive reviews that are out there, the more people are going to review it highly. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that speaks very much volume to how Rotten Tomatoes works. Yep. Um, whether people like it or not, Rotten Tomatoes is very influential and people say it's not, but there's tons of studies out there. If you look at it, that millennials, especially millennials who are the ones with the highest disposable income, you know, millennials and whatever the heck the next generation is mm -hmm. after that are the highest generations or people of disposable income. And they use Rotten Tomatoes. Thor Ragnarok is not a 93%. Batman v Superman is not a 28% or 27%. Right. All right. I'm not saying that Thor Ragnarok is bad, and I'm not saying Batman v Superman is a masterpiece, but they those Close. are not. The, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I've seen some people say that. I'm like masterpiece. No. <laughs> Come on, man, be realistic. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, those are not re reasonable scores, and we've talked right. about Rotten Tomatoes to the nth degree. Yeah. But I even had the we even just had the experience in the theater as we were sitting there about yeah. to watch Thor Ragnarok. There was a gentleman and his 
girlfriend that or wife or whoever it was was sitting next to us let's first first let's talk about the little kid oh the little kid that was chanting <laughs> justice league yeah. just before the movie yeah yeah that was hilarious he's like just, he's like a six-year-old and then uh, i think the justice league trailer we didn't he was ta- doing it before the movie anything started oh that's true he was yeah. just yelling justice yep. league at the screen and, and then uh and then the justice league trailer shows we didn't go through our whole um theater experience but well, i'm um, saving it for this okay yeah so the um the trailers were awesome that we got some great trailers in, in this uh perfectly placed ones um um, a, a lot that we've seen, but it was pretty cool. Uh, Black Panther, we got the Justice League trailer, um, we got the Star Wars, uh, Star Wars New Mutants. Like there, there was there was a good good amount of trailers. So um, Justice League shows up, and the kids like, oh, it's this, it's from the Superman movie we just watched, or something like that. Yeah. So his dad's uh, raising him right. <laughs> <laughs> so the gentleman next to me, um, he. His the Justice League trailer starts playing for not for some reason not in the proper aspect ratio though. That was no, crazy. that bugged the shit out of me. Yeah, I'm a, so it's a Disney. I don't know who de- who determines this, but they decided. Sure, yeah, we'll let you play your film on you know in in front of ours but the, the trailer. Fucking, but uh, yeah, three quarters of the screen. <laughs> yeah. it, it's going to be YouTube like 480p. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Anyway, I hear. The wife or girlfriend next to him say, oh, that looks like some." I'm paraphrasing this because I did not exactly hear because there was a loud trailer going yeah. on. But I got the gist of the conversation. But she was basically saying, that looks cool. Uh, do you want to see it? And I heard him say, after Suicide Squad and Batman versus Superman, I don't think I want to see it. And she's like, you didn't like Suicide Squad. And he's like, no, didn't you see? I didn't like Suicide Squad or Batman vs. Superman. They got rated so poorly. They were terrible. And I was just like, okay, yeah, he's talking fast. He's not uh, going to have a full-blown conversation with this woman in the middle of the theater. The trailer, yeah. Yeah, while the trailer's going on. But the fact that, you know, it's very telling when the person's, the first thing that comes in a person's mind when they're trying to explain something quickly is that, it got rated or reviewed in this general poorly. Yeah. That was his reason. Uh, the, of, the instant reaction right. anyway. He might have a whole detailed analysis of yeah. why he doesn't prefer those movies. But the instant reaction, the instant reaction this guy had was that they were rated or reviewed poorly. Yeah. It, it, it kind of reminds me of this other uh, page slash podcast um, that I've listened to. And it actually was one of the, the things that kind of – um, jump started uh, my passion and and Matt and I eventually starting this podcast. But um, one one of the uh, hosts talks about his his first experience with Batman versus Superman, and he talks about walking out of the theater like a little unsure, but overall enjoying it. And then a bunch of people on Twitter started telling him, "Oh no, your reaction wasn't all that great. I you I don't think you liked it as much as you say." Blah blah blah. And then he goes back on his word. And he's like, no, I don't like it at all. Now, all of a sudden, his podcast is is just shit on DC, you know, across the board. And I and that blew me away that I'm like, man, you're going to let people on Twitter tell you what how you felt about a movie. It's different. Like, I, I kind of had the same reaction when I first w- watched Batman vs. Superman. Okay, I enjoyed that, but I need to see it again. Like, you know, what did I just watch? That was a lot to take in, you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, that's almost what it sounded like to me. And then all of a sudden he's influenced because all these people are telling him how horrible it is that, that he's not going to enjoy it at all. And, and that just blew me away that I'm like, man, people just do not, they're not open-minded. They, they will take whatever anyone else tells them, which to a certain degree that that's going to be the case. You know, we had um, Robert and Ebert or whatever. Robert, e- <laughs> those fucking two critics way back in the day, the two thumbs up. Roger and Ebert. So, Roger and e- Ebert. Yeah. yeah Roger and Ebert. <laughs> uh, whatever. Cisco and Ebert. Cisco and Ebert. Yeah. So, uh, you thong, know. Thong to thong to thong. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's why I wasn't sure if Cisco was right. Um, but I think it's Cisco. Cisco. Okay. Yeah. Not Cisco. <laughs> Not Unleash the Dragon. Into, okay. yeah. Got it. Unleash the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an innuendo. Um, but you know, we people will look at something. You know, if if it's uh, critically received w- one way or another, you you will kind of go into it like, okay, yeah, you know, let me see how this is. It it got panned, but I feel like now we're in the the overall community or the overall consensus. I don't even really know how to put this. Is like, okay, whatever I'm told, that's how that's you know how I'm gonna take this film. And if it does well on Rotten Tomatoes, 
then then I'm going to enjoy it. And it's it's even, you know, you could go on the other side and say that Wonder Woman is exactly the same. Yeah. You know, it got received really well. And it was everyone, a good movie. It was a great yeah. movie. But I don't the, the praise it got was, I think, a little overkill and a little overrated. Mm. I think it, it put the movie up into a point where it became hard for other people to watch it. Because I think it became overrated. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty often. I think that happened with Civil War for me. Yeah. Oh, that was one last thing that we did want to point out after all that. Yeah. (laughs) After we we pulled up and after watching Ragnarok, after watching Doctor Strange, and even like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy to some extent, um, it's it's Shane and I just kind of sat there and started thinking like... Civil War is actually it's you know, starting to look a little bit better. It's starting to look a lot yeah. better. <laughs> it, 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 I would I would kill to go back to a Civil War tone right now. Yeah, yeah, no shit. Than, like than I, Ragnarok I, and Str- Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah, I will take uh, the the nitpicks that I have about that movie oh, aren't yeah. aren't aren't as bad anymore. No, it, you no. Know, when, <laughs> when you have films like this, and and I actually I applaud the Russo brothers, but I, you know I go back to I've said this uh, on several different uh, episodes, but the article um, that I read talk where they were talking about they heard about Batman versus Superman and they knew they had to do something different. And I think the I'm kind of paraphrasing this, but the example they said is you can give someone vanilla ice cream all the time, eventually they're going to get sick of it. We need to change it up, and. I I think they did that, and and I I applaud them for that, and I'm really starting to appreciate Civil War a lot more. Yeah, I'm starting. I, I I'm hoping that I'm actually feeling better a little bit now about Avengers because they're helming it. Yeah, you know, and uh, and the fact that they're going to be doing that. Black Panther looks solid. Yeah, it so does. it looks like we're we have we're going to get back into hopefully some more reasonably better <laughs> Marvel movies because Strange. Guardian Galaxy was fine, it, but it did have its moments, and but this one, Ragnarok, was. I, I Guardians of the Galaxy knew what it was, what it was, and what it wanted to be. Yeah. It knew we are going to go in this, and we are going to be Spitfire comedy, one one thing after another. And as long as you identify that, okay, perfect, you know. And uh, and I think that's why I was able to enjoy it a lot more. And yeah. again, you have Doctor Strange and. And Ragnarok, they just do not know what what they want to be. Do they want to be a superhero movie first or a comedy first? And and I I, th- I think the the film suffers overall. Yep. Oh, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube page. We are at eighty nine subscribers. Woo! We might hit a hundred before the end of the year. I, I'm fucking shocked. I don't know what has happened, but we we're, we're getting like consistent emails. Such and such has subscribed. I'm like, holy shit! Yeah, like, this is, this is insane. It's blowing up. Just like a Shows- week week ago, some jackass was trying to say we only had seventy nine <laughs> subscribers. Now we got eighty nine. Yeah, fucker. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Showing you how it's done. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, make sure you check us out on Instagram at, and Facebook and Twitter yep. at Comic Movie Marks. All social media, you can send us emails at Comic Movie Marks as well. At gmail.com. Uh, at gmail.com, yeah. What did I say? At Comic Movie Marks? No, you didn't even say anything. You just send us, uh, you can send us emails as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you can. <laughs> or whatever. Or you can, you know, uh, direct message us on Instagram, Facebook. Whichever, yep. whichever you want to do. Uh, and then you can also download our podcast on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. Podcast Republic is the uh, podcast app of choice yeah, by, by Matt. So yep. It has all Comic Movie March podcasts. Make sure you review us on iTunes, that glorified iTunes review. Woo, all in your face. Um <laughs> Yeah, do yep. it. Leave us a review. review us. Even if it's negative, positive, whatever you got, bitches. If you hated our review on Thor Ragnarok, give us a review. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. You know. Oh, yeah. Asgard. Asgard. <laughs> Check it out. Who that dress so scandalous? <laughs>